Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. On this week's topic, I wanted to discuss something that's even more trickier than navigating your own family dynamics, and that's to be dealing with difficult, toxic in-laws. I know that culturally, in-laws are very, very involved in our lives, in your decision-making, in your children's upbringing. It's just something that you go from your parents' house and you go into your in-laws' house and you become theirs. But it is also across board. Dealing with difficult and toxic in-laws is kind of a common ground for majority of people who are going into a new family to spend the rest of their lives with their partner. When you marry your partner, you're also marrying their family and you're also marrying their siblings and their extended family because you're gonna have to deal with them day in, day out for the rest of your life. They're gonna become your new family. And knowing how to navigate that, knowing how to deal with that, knowing how to kind of manage and maintain the balance is incredibly important to the growth and to the resilience of your relationship. If you haven't been to my page before, welcome. I'm Hamasa. I look at mental and emotional well-being as well as personal development and day-to-day -day issues. Please do subscribe to my page so that you are up to date with all my content. First things first when it comes to in-laws. One thing I would say to you is you have to have incredible amounts of patience and understanding. And the first thing that you need to do is despite what goes on between your in-laws and you or your spouse's relatives and brothers and sisters shouldn't affect the relationship that you have with your partner. There should be a clear cut line that you and I love each other, accept each other, understand each other and see the differences and we're okay with it. And anything that may threaten that, we won't allow, even if it's my family or yours. So uh, the first thing to establish is to have a very good understanding and see eye to eye and agree on situations with your partner and not let their family's choices affect your relationship with them. When you have this clear cut difference between how you feel about your partner and how you feel about your partner's family, you are then creating a team. You become a unit and so you don't have to fight or deal with whatever the in-laws are throwing at you by yourself. It's important for you to have the support of your spouse because this is their family. They know their family better than you do. They understand their family better than you do. So you need to have their support and you need them to see eye to eye and agree in, on situations with you. So that's the first step. You going there single-handedly, alone, facing things, dealing with snidey comments, it's not really gonna resolve anything, and if anything, it's gonna create more issues. This shouldn't come from you alone. So whatever issues you have, give it to yourself, speak to your partner. My next tip would be that whenever you guys, which just leads on from my first point, is that whenever you guys do have problems, do have arguments, try your best not to involve family members because what you may be able to forgive in your partner, your family won't. Because what they say is love is blind and it is. When you love someone, you tend to overlook a lot of things because of how you feel, the emotions kind of take over. But your family doesn't necessarily feel those feelings towards your partner. So if you go running and telling your family everything and complaining, that would create issues for your partner later on. Because you guys will get over this, you'll resolve it, you'll talk about it and you'll forgive each other, but your family won't. And then when years down the line, your parents don't get along with your husband or your wife, you kind of have yourself to blame because you've painted a very bad picture of them in your parents' eyes and they're protecting you. So they're not going to like the person who's harming you. I'm going to share an interesting fact with you guys. Through my research, I found out that in the first year of marriage, if the husband gets along with his mother-in-law, then you decrease your chance of divorce by 20%. That's how important it is for your husband to get along with your mother. If your wife gets along with her mother-in-law in the first year of marriage, 
then there's a 20% chance increase in divorce in your marriage. And that's insane to me. And then the, the, the scientists and researchers explained why that is. And that's because if you don't set healthy boundaries and draw the lines and try very hard to win them over and become their friend and be excessively friendly and get along like just putting yourself aside and trying to please your husband's family to win them over then later on that will that catches up with you and you start feeling really resentful so then more chance of a divorce so it's important that as much as you want to get along with your in-laws you still have to have some clear-cut healthy boundaries um, together so you and your partner should sit down together see eye to eye make some decisions and then speak to the family members together as a unit as a team that way they can't use it as ammunition against you because if you don't see eye to eye in situations one goes and tells the family one thing and then someone else comes and says something totally different it shows weakness in your relationship and if your in-laws are toxic and you're dealing with people that don't like you then most likely that will be used as ammunition something to be used against you and basically try and create more issues so that's why it's important that whenever you guys do set boundaries and do approach the topic it needs to be done when both of you are in agreement behind closed doors and then when and if you're ready and both see eye to eye and fully are solid and have each other's back is when to approach the family member, sit them down and speak to them about it, but never ever on your own or when you don't see eye to eye. One of the things to understand and accept when you get married to someone that there has to be some adjustments made. And this is also if your daughter or son is getting married. So you have a new daughter-in-law coming into your household. This applies to both sides. You have to understand that someone from a completely different upbringing, background, lifestyle, educational level, financial level, all sorts of different things is coming into your family. So they will be different. There will be things that you may not see eye to eye, may not agree on, and that's okay. You just have to adjust and compromise and learn and discuss and communicate. So as long as you know that there, should, there will be some adjustments made, then you'll be okay because whatever comes your way you understand is coming secondly another thing to accept expect and understand is that once you commit and choose to get married then your family the one that you're going to build with your spouse should be your priority you're a grown-up person you've made a decision you're ready to procreate yourself and have kids if you choose to do so so let go of mommy and daddy. And I feel like this mainly may come down to the men. There sh you shouldn't create this dynamic of a competition between your mother and your wife. And at the same time, your wife or the wife should understand that it's important for their partner to have a good relationship with their mothers because that's the first relationship that your partner had with a woman. So if they are healthy and they've got a good relationship and they respect their mothers, then most likely that will get translated into your relationship and how he treats you and how he sees women overall. So if they have a good relationship, that's not a bad sign, but it's about knowing and prioritizing and everybody having their own place. If a competition is created, then that's an issue. And mummy's boys have got to accept that now that they're married, their wife has her own place and they shouldn't be pick and choose. Each person brings something different to the table. So you need to love them differently and separately and not create this sense of competition or jealousy. So that adjustment expecting it will first come in the first year of marriage and the second time round is when you have your first child because those are the two big things that really shake up a family dynamic so when those two things happen just expect such some adjustments and see how things go keep an open mind and go with the flow next thing would be to try and find some common ground we choose our friends we can't choose our family age-old saying so 
now that you know that you've married your partner and this is going to be your new family you're gonna have to find things that you guys will enjoy to do together anything that's common ground will just break the ice a little make people feel comfortable they'll be more in their element and more likely you will form bonds and connect with them there'll be a lot of things that you guys will probably not see eye to eye on but the things that you do try and put the focus and energy on that and the more you do that the more you will build things that you have in common and you will build bonds and connections so if you find it very difficult to talk to your in-laws, finding some common ground will help with that. It'll just break that ice and just make things a little bit more comfortable so that you can approach conversations and bring things up and it doesn't have to feel very, very like an argumentative debate kind of style. It's more like a casual conversation and it could be discussed, resolved and put to bed. The next thing would be to not really sweat the small stuff. So yeah i said to set boundaries and to have healthy boundaries but also picking and choosing because when we're a little bit insecure or we feel like our in-laws don't like us we're gonna feel like we're being picked on and take things very personally and sometimes it's not necessarily personal so if your mother-in-law comes over to your house you've cooked and she asks for the salt that doesn't mean that she's trying to criticize your cooking or that you haven't made this right it just might mean that she just prefers more salt in her food but if you're feeling a little bit self-conscious, you're gonna take that as, oh my God, this is what it means, this is how I feel, this is feel making me feel bad, she picks on me, it's a nice snidey comment. So it's important to not take person things personally and rate things. So anything like on a scale of one to 10, how much is this, how important is this and how much is this bothering me? If it's anything six and below, let it go. You have got to learn to compromise more with your in-laws. You just have to. They are important to your partner. They are never going to go away. You have to accept them. But if it's six and above and it's really playing up on your mind and it's something that's really shaking you up or you really dislike, then it's worth addressing and speaking about. So always, whatever happens, something's being said at the dinner table, something's being disagreed on, just look at it and think, how do I rate this situation? Okay, it's not that high up on my list. I'm gonna let this go. Pick your battles, be smart about it. Don't give your time and energy to things and situations that are actually mundane and don't really make a difference in the grand scheme of things. But the things that you do, don't take a note of them, speak to your partner, discuss it, and then move forward together, like my previous point, and address it and resolve it. Next thing would be to honor your in-laws. When you're a kid and you're with your parents, you obey your parents. But as you grow up and the power dynamic kind of shifts, things change, you start honoring them and listening to them. You don't necessarily obey them per se. This is the same thing with your in-laws. Remember, your in-laws are doing what they're doing to, they, one, they might be just toxic people and they need a punching bag and you've come along perfect. But on the flip side, it could also mean that they're very protective and loving of their son or daughter. So they're doing what they're doing to protect their child. It's not necessarily about you. And if that's the case, they have years of wisdom, years of experience that they would want to share with their offspring to protect them and teach them and whatever. So when they come and share their opinions, tell you what they think you should do, you know, share their wisdom with you. It's because they want to really help you or help their child. So honor that, listen to them, give them the time, make them feel important. But you don't have to follow through with that advice. You don't have to do everything that they tell you to do. You don't have to live your life the way they say you should. All you're doing is just showing them respect and giving them time. Don't what my advice to you guys would be, don't ever try and come between your partner and their family. Don't give them ultimatums, regardless of how much they dislike you or how difficult the situation may be for you. That's still their family and it's their blood and it's just not going to work out in your favor. So you cannot ask your partner to walk away or turn their back on their family because you don't like them or they don't like you. So knowing that and understanding that all you can do is adjust yourself, your expectations, your boundaries, and 
you know, what things that you're in control of is what will make this manageable moving forward. So as long as you guys have love and respect for each other, you and your partner, the family issues are always secondary because you can face and deal with them as a team. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I may not personally have had the experience of dealing with the in-laws, but I have for sure seen it around my friends, my mother, my family, and it's something that's very prominent in my culture because it is, you literally leave your father's house and you become your in-laws daughter. So you kind of don't have much of your own time to grow and get to know each other. And I've seen so many things go wrong and fall apart. So that's why it's important to address this topic, discuss it, make it less stigmatized. It is something that a lot of people struggle. Like I said, it's not just in our cultures. It's really literally across board. So the sooner we learn how to adjust and kind of accept our in-laws for who and what they are, the better and more fruitful our relationships will be. Thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to my page, like and comment on this video, and I will see you guys again here next week. Mwah.